Aloha shrimp keepers, out to Joe Holt. So I'm trying out a new thing this morning. I was feeding my green sunfish silver sides and I thought, you know, shrimp would probably like some meat. So I threw a silver side in each one of my shrimp tanks and uh, yeah, they are losing their minds. Even the ram's horn snails are getting in on the action. So the big chunk of white glowy thing in the middle is uh, about a inch and a half long, maybe two inches, they've been chewing on it, uh, long silver side, head and tail removed, not intentional, just happened that way, and I dropped one in each tank, and every tank, there's, I have five shrimp tanks, they look just like this, so um, I'm not going to bother moving the camera around making you dizzy or anything but if you want to see shrimping <laughs> this is shrimping so what you're seeing there too the, if you're wondering the green plant uh, there on the left that is sawasa tang I learned about it through Mark shrimp tanks thank you Mark and do it it's amazing it's a lot of fun it's a slow grower but it gives you the look of salt water plant in freshwater which I think it goes really well with the shrimp and they love it uh, they, they eat on it and eat off of it they live in it the babies uh, when you if you tie sawasa tang to choya wood uh, which choya wood is just a, is a dead hollowed out piece of a cactus uh, about as big around as your thumb and index finger can make generally about that size when you buy them online but if you tie some acetane to it and put it under high intensity light oh it puffs up big like a afro it's cool and uh, the babies love to live in it the snails will also lay their eggs in there so it works really well for shrimp keeping and Mark shrimp tanks what Mark was doing he ties it onto rope and does Sawasa tang ropes, which are really cool. Um, I tried it, but I didn't listen to Mark. <laughs> and I tried uh, just some kind of string I had laying around in my house. And no, you definitely need a particular kind of rope so it doesn't get like mildewy and moldy looking underwater. Uh, Mark covers that. If you look up Mark shrimp tanks, Sawasa tang ropes, you'll, he goes into it. But uh, I just, I prefer choya wood because it's a natural substance. And I try to keep the tanks as natural as possible. I try to do a, a, a more of like a natural environment because I'm doing these for my own visual pleasure, not really commercial. Uh, it would be a pain if you had to try to get these shrimp out of a fully planted tank every time you wanted to sell some. But uh, these shrimp are for sale. <laughs> if you're anywhere near uh, Grand Junction, Colorado, uh, I will meet you in Grand Junction and sell you shrimp. I have a lot. <laughs> I mean, I have hundreds easily for sale. And you're welcome to them. I have fully mature females. I have uh, younger mixed male females. The uh, If you buy in bulk, the mix is 250 If you want a mature bearing female, they're four. And I try not to ship too much during the winter because the issue is they're very fragile creatures and with the with the weather freezing, um, they they have a hard time. I don't I don't know if you guys know this, but most aquarium creatures that you will keep in a freshwater aquarium, if you swing the temperature more than say six or eight degrees quickly, you're going to throw things into shock and, and very potentially lose uh, your animals. So you definitely don't want to be doing that. Um, the, the, of course, the main issue with the shrimp and shipping them is even if you put in a heat pack, 
it's holiday right now. We're just in the beginning of January, so Christmas stuff's still out there in the mail. And if these guys get hung up somewhere, you're just basically going to get a bag of goo, like muddy water. It's not good. So we want to keep our shrimp alive. In case you're wondering if you've uh, ever been told, males and females are pretty easy to tell once you've been around them for a sec. Um, let's see. Let's see. They like to move around a lot. On the far right of the screen, headed away is a female. Top middle is a female. They have a thicker back end and a darker red color. Um, that's because they hold the eggs under the, their tail in the swimmerettes. And so then the males don't hold the eggs and they have that longer, skinnier back end. I, and I'm noticing in here the males mainly have that clear striping. So you have the red and white striping with the clear in the middle where the females are mostly solid red. I don't know if that's how they normally are or not, but um, I'm looking in this tank and looks like my males are predominantly tiger striped red and clear and the females are predominantly solid so that could be a trait of the males and females I don't know I've I can tell you this I've never seen a female in this tank yet that has the clear striping they're all solid red and they have red legs too see terry shrimp there's there's different grades you'll hear people say sakura and high red and all these others they're they're all cherry shrimp basically what you're looking at a regular cherry shrimp would be that clear with red once you start getting into a more solid red the grade goes up once you add red legs instead of clear legs the grade goes up if you add like white joints on the legs and red legs right that's a highlight that can you know it, it's it really the only place that matters right now is Japan they have enough of a um, commercial cherry shrimp breeding thing going that people are looking I mean they're paying hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars for a single shrimp because of its characteristics so there's nothing like that going um, in America quite yet. But there's, there are plenty of individual breeders doing like what I'm doing at home, a couple tanks. And they're selling them online. You can get them on a few different websites. I won't name any in particular just because I don't actually have a preference. But as you can tell and have been watching, in case you were wondering, yes, cherry shrimp do want meat every once in a while. And I say every once in a while because, well, this is the first time I've ever fed these guys meat. Um, but I will probably now add it. Obviously, I, I'm using some pretty, uh, pretty nice food shrimp food specifically uh, from Japan, from Germany. And so it's got everything they need, you know, minerals and metals and nutrition. But if you weren't feeding that high-end food, this would be a way to get the shrimp uh, things that they wouldn't normally get in a powder or flake food, right? The, the organs, the bone, the... the skin, the scales, all of it has different chemicals, minerals, metals, I mean. And also, you know, if this if this were to sit in the tank for any length of time, it would grow like a slime coat on it. And the shrimp love that too. Uh, that's what they eat off of the leaves and rocks and things of that nature. So just a real natural, healthy way to go about feeding your shrimp. And this video's gone on long enough. 
I'll show you. Like down here's another tank. They're going off. This tank is going off. This tank is going off. So yeah, we're shrimping. Aloha.